Hey there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake. Last time, when we left off, we had, well, the game conveniently divides itself into eight episodes, and we had finished the first one, Nightmare. We were at the beginning of episode two, Taken. Let's go ahead and fire up the game before we do anything else. Hey, Lone Wonder. I'm good. I mean, it was a Monday, but it wasn't horrible. All right. Triple D's, Bright's Diner. We'll give it the usual few minutes, then we'll hit continue game. But yeah, I'm good. Little bit sleepy. Getting all the way through an entire episode, maybe... That may be a bit aspirational. Um, I don't know if I've got much longer than an hour in me. But we'll see how it goes. About yourself. How was your Monday? We have Tiff back. She is successfully returned from Chicago. She's watching on the PlayStation downstairs. We all remember how much she loves Alan Wake. I'm sure she'll chime in. Hey, Infinimora. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome. <laughs> it's true. I did stream loads this weekend. It was fun though. I I enjoyed it and we put a we put a hefty dent in Baldur's Gate. We're still, like, there's still so much of the city left to explore. <laughs> it's like, so much. We've still only fully cleared one of the nine maps, but it's okay. We're making progress, and it's good. I doubt Carefree is going to be in here, considering how late it is in Ireland, but it's just funny because I know that one of the very last things we discussed yesterday was uh, the Twitch payout, and it's just neat because I got my payout for the last month today, and it was $175, which is the biggest one I've ever gotten, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Gradually ticking up. Growth is slow, but steady. All righty. That's about long enough. Let's go ahead and kick off the game. Should be at the very beginning of episode two. Steam Cloud Alan Wake. I'm home. Back yep. here, sweetie. How was it? 
Worst weather I've ever seen. You should put some coffee on. It'll warm you up. Switch on the coffee maker. Hey, handsome. This is going to be a long night, but these shots are turning out great. I guess you're going to need that coffee then. I'll go put it on. There's a thermos here in her office. Blizzards in New York City. And apparently they can afford this level of apartment. Let's turn it on. Coffee's on. Great, thanks. I'll need it if I'm going to finish this by tomorrow. Oh, hey, I just finished those cover mock-ups. They're on your desk. Tell me what you think. No kidding. I didn't think you'd get them done this quickly. On occasion, I can perform all sorts of miracles, my dear. Oh, really? Well, you seemed to think so last night. Ooh, manuscript pages. The sudden stop, one and two. It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. A rerun of my own private snuff movie. A memory of my corpse. Alone at my own wake. Thinking in metaphors again. The femme fatale was gone. Only a sour taste remained of the kiss that killed me. And the sudden stop, too. This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge, it had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. My blood painted the snow red. A gruesome slushy dissolved all the scattered painkillers and leisurely dripped down to the sewer mingling with the bile of the city, becoming one with it. I can see them now, my wife and my baby. Honey, I'm home. That's, I think, a pretty obvious shout-out to Max Payne. Not that I mind. These look really good. Oh, sure, until Barry gets his hands on them. Which, by the way, will happen over my dead body. The last time was the last time. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. <gasps> Alan! Alan, please check the fuse box. I'm right here. I'm on it, honey. Please hurry. I'm right here, baby. I'm fine, I'm fine. Just get the lights back on, now, please. Honey, it's a power outage. I've got the flashlight. Okay. Hi. You okay? I'm sorry. I just... It just really spooked me. Don't worry. We'll just break out the candles. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. I love you. Tell me a story, writer. Okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light switch. She called it the clicker. The clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Oh, sure. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help you, too. <laughs> yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> Seriously. I love you, even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. Bright Falls, the present day. Hmm. How do you feel, Mr. Wick? Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. 
He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. Hmm, very well. Um, I don't think you have a concussion, but you've obviously been through quite a shock. You should take it easy for a couple of days. Thanks. Well then, Mr. Wake, we're done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. Doc Nelson was the image of a small town doctor. Sheriff Breaker had called him to the station to take a look at the cut in my head. I'm sorry you had to cut your morning fishing short for this, Doc. Oh, she's a beauty, ain't she? Not the biggest I ever caught, if you can believe that coming from an old fisherman like me. But she's right up there. Now, she's a largemouth bass, which is what you're after if you prefer a lure. Now, if you want either trout or salmon, on the other hand, then it's fly fishing for you. Um, you a fishing man, Mr. Wake? Oh, doesn't really matter, I suppose. But it can be very relaxing out there. You can't get me off the water this time of year. Closest thing to heaven. I'll take your word for it, Doc. I occasionally like fishing. Not big into it. Alright. Well, we just have the one exit, so let's go. Oh. Thank you for testing the lights, Miss Weaver. Everything seems to be fine. I don't have the luxury of being complacent, Deputy Grant. The boats will need changing soon. You can't change them in the dark. I'll be sure to take care of it, Miss Weaver. Have a nice day now. Very good. I'll come back later on to remind you, just in case. first Mr. Wake Alice was missing was for you I needed help to quarter? find her I wasn't ready to leave that was Cynthia Weaver I guess you can call her the town eccentric she used to be the editor of the local newspaper but she's focused on um well, other things these days she'd fit right in where I come from as you can see she's a little obsessed with maintaining the light bulbs of the whole town refuses to step on shadows things like that Back in her day, she wrote about all sorts of weird things in the paper. Bright Falls has a colorful history. Of course, what small town hasn't? Yeah, it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky's gas station with Thornton. There's no sign of him. Over. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is Thornton. Look, we've located the parade float. It's here. That's some good news, right? Stucky was supposed to be driving it at the rehearsals today. Over. Oh, give me that. Mulligan here. Looks like someone really thrashed the garage. Over. Okay, roger that, guys. Keep looking for Stucky. Chains out. All right. <clears throat> There's a thermos and a manuscript page in here. Alice sees a shadow. Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Cauldron Lake was breathtaking. Something caught her eye. A figure standing in the shadows behind the cabin, like a thin woman in a black dress. She lowered the camera and looked again. No one there. Just a collection of bushes that looked vaguely human-shaped. She shook her head and laughed. All right. The sheriff wants to see you in her office, Mr. Wake. Missing. Richard Ball, Bruce Dansky, Jacob Miller. On a camping trip, overdue, haven't been in contact. If you have seen them or know their whereabouts, please call 555-9932. Thank you. Exit. Have you seen this man? Disappeared on 62007 identifying features knack for winning contests exit you have to read both of those to get credit for that sign collectible well, let's head to the sheriff's office
Come in, Mr. Wake. Your phone's on the desk. The battery was dead. It's charged now. Have you started looking for my wife yet? My men are already on it. Now, can you tell me what happened? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We were arguing. I walked out of the cabin. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? How did you end up at Stucky's gas station? I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. She'd lock me up. Excuse me. I need to take this. Hello? Alan, please help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. Who is this? Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. I left a little something there to convince you we're all on the same page here. After you ditch the cops, you're gonna meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Midnight. Don't do nothing stupid, pal. We're watching you. Go to the back lot. We could go back in there, but... Mr. Wade, can I help you with anything? I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. You can get there through the cell corridor. Just don't mind Walter in there. He's one of our regulars. I thought he quit drinking for good. Oh, no such luck. He went on a bender and beat Danny pretty badly. He started shouting like that the moment he woke up. Hey! Hey, mister! Hey, can you turn the light? The light's on! The deputies, they won't, they don't understand. They won't listen to me. I, I need it to be bright in here. Thank you, man, thank you. Hey, you're all right. You're a good guy. Don't let anybody tell you different. You know, I shouldn't even be in here. The cops, they got it all wrong, see? Sure, 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 I beat him up. I wasn't drunk. I mean, I wasn't drunk at the time. I only got drunk afterward. Okay, listen. Listen, listen. You gotta listen carefully now. Here's the kicker. That wasn't Danny. No, sir. I only looked like him. You wanna know who it really was? I'll tell you who it really was. It was a goddamn space alien! I know it sounds like something a drunk would say, but believe me, I wasn't drunk then. Okay, he's done. There's a manuscript page here in the last cell. The Dark Presence in the Diner. In spite of its human mask, to describe the Dark Presence as intelligent would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. All right. The early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. We got a thermos and a radio over here in the back. Let's get those. Hey, well, folks, it's been another long night and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> Uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day's almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? No point in getting all worked up yet.
The caller had told me to find a hole in the fence behind the police station. There was something for me in an abandoned car. Here we go. Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Another manuscript page back here. Wake at Lover's Peak. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mast blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? All right. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. Oh, I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Ow! What the hell is going on? I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. Exit the sheriff's station. A writer is a light that reveals the world of his story from darkness, shapes it from nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. All right. <clears throat> Marvelous, Sarah. I just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions, of course. I can assure you that my staff has been reprimanded. Tor and Odin never caused any trouble to anyone when they were still living at their farm. Indeed. All we can do is to slow down the progress of their dementia. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about- Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emile Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh! Hey! Oh my! Take it easy. Hey, nobody move! Get your hands off of my client! Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. Get me out of here. What the hell was that about, Al? We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were going to lock you up. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money, and he believed that Alice had been kidnapped. Anything beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him! Hi, Rose. Oh, wow, I was just thinking about you, too. Great. 
I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after Max. Poor thing. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! Who's Max? What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at Everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. Bucktooth Charlie, Colombian Mammoth. This is another sign. The skeleton of a Colombian mammoth, Mammothus columbi. This specimen, estimated to be 14,000 years old, was recovered from the Labria tar pits in 1981. It was donated to the Elderwood National Park in 1998, when the Colombian mammoth became Washington's state fossil. Named Bucktooth to Charlie, it has since become the park's official mascot. Neat. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car? Just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy? And his body just disappeared? When was the last time you slept? What, are you high? Have you been drinking? No! Look, Barry, I'm missing a week, and someone's got Alice, Do and everything's just... Do you understand what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong, it's a good story, could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Right, wait here. Um, don't miss the thermos. There, at that kitchen counter. I'm sure you noticed me grabbing it. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, oh. Rusty, right? You rent cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? <laughs> Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're illegal to use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is gonna be okay. He got lucky. Oh, Max. Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing, it... Listen, you hit your head. I mean, geez, Al, come on. You gotta understand how crazy Excuse all this me. sounds. If you're trying to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha-ha, let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. There it is. Sign the form. Take it to Rusty. I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. Get the keys and get to the car. If you have any trouble finding it, just keep your eyes on the radio mast. It's right below that. Interesting. Look, Al, you're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went poof into thin air a guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. Do you hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with two long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills? Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. You gave me an hour-long lecture on homeopathy last month. What was it? If there's no proof, it's pure bullshit. Period. Guess the laugh's on me, then. Al, come on! I mean, okay. Okay, maybe something weird happened to you, okay? Well, thanks for the heartfelt vote of confidence. All I'm saying is you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. What would you think if it was me? There's no way you should be going out at midnight with a gun. No one asked you to come here, Barry. Either work with me on this or go straight back to New York. Your choice. Uh -huh.
That's just crazy talk, Al. Al. Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI? Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. This is not a goddamn debate, Barry. <laughs> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. But you're my best friend and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help and I'll do it. You stay here and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. Head to Lover Speak. Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Achoo! Bless you. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I'll bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a 15% commission. All right, head for Lover's Peak. There's a thermos downstairs in the kitchen. Grab that first. Don't miss the batteries next to the stove. Here it is. Cabin has a hot tub with another thermos. Uh, Tiff, it's it's only my second time. There was the one when we lived in Chicago, and now this one. Here's a manuscript page. Barry doubts Wake's sanity. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice. evil birds. All right. Oh, we do have a gun. Good. Ooh, another cabin. Oh, we can turn the lights on. That's good. Radio. Well, welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deerfest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> oh. Oh. No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? 
<laughs> yes, exactly, Bat. But I'm going to check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a largemouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? <laughs> Considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. There we go. And revolver ammo. Dilly dilly. No, oh, no, leave the lights on. Always, with always more lights. Oh, this looks creepy. cabin. Elderwood Nature Trail, Moonshine Cave, and Lover's Peak. Let's check out the cabin first. said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. The white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. You won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard! What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. You got me? I... I don't understand any of this. And you never will. Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror.
All right, that one's over. Onward. Oh, shoot. Oh, I didn't mean to waste a bullet. Oh, well. Do not feed wildlife. So this gazebo up here for another manuscript page. Rose and Rusty. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile, made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. Another manuscript page. Rusty dying. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten, drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. Almost back down to the visitor center. The vision left me weak. This was no head injury. No! I missed something. Think anyway. Well, maybe not. Thermos. Manuscript page. Rusty attacked by the dark presence. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. 
Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. Thermos back here. Yahoo. Now we'll go actually go to the visitor center, check on Rusty. Hello? Back here. I'm back here. Hey. Mr. Wake? <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> It happened, just the way it was on that page. I found... Game true. It knew. So dark. It'll come back for me. You must... The lights. In the office. I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. Rusty had found a page from the manuscript. It would help me understand what had happened. The only way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. There's another page. Wake reaches a safe haven of light. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. too late. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. Rusty! Rusty! The ground was covered with oily patches that looked like liquid darkness. Something had torn a mammoth-sized hole in the wall. Please don't feed the animals. 
fishing is only permitted for those prisoners who purchase a park fishing license to obey the park ranger's instructions at all times. Rusty, Rusty, no! Never. Two bears and wolves never approach any other wolf. Look closer than 25 yards. Pets must be leashed. It is against the law to remove any natural objects or historical artifacts from the park grounds. This includes even rocks you may or even simple berries! Thin layer of skin. Well, that's unfortunate. Sorry, Rusty. Hmm? out. Safe haven. Lovely. What? What the hell was that? I saw it from the window. I saw it. I saw something. Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Ow, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. Manuscript page. Rusty's final thoughts. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens. But she made him feel young and forget what a train wreck his long dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. Lover's Peak was at the far end of the nature trail. Entering Moonshine Cave. Ah, graffiti. Site of frequent bootlegger activity through, throughout the Prohibition.
shotgun. And a chest. Achievement unlocked. Finders keepers. That's for finding five of the thirty chests. Oh, this sign is actually readable. This cave was the site of frequent and lucrative bootlegger activity throughout the Prohibition 1919 to 1933. It was mostly used for temporary storage of alcohol smuggled from Canada, but at times alcohol was also distilled on the premises. Oh, look. There was a taken up there. Three of them out of nowhere. Alright. Still win. Got batteries. Manuscript page. Barry meets Rose. Nobody in Bright Falls seemed to know where Al was, but Rose, the waitress at the diner, had seen him. From what Barry could tell, Al pretty much fell off the face of the earth when he left the diner. Rose was just the kind of fan that Al hated, but she really tried to help. She was smart, too. Knew a lot about what was going on in the town. Knew a lot about Al. Even knew who Barry was. Barry liked her. That was no big surprise. When it came to women, Barry and Al rarely saw eye to eye. this it means they're gonna they're gonna spawn there we go safe haven Shotgun, shells, That's good stuff.
Whoa. Charge our help for the Haven. The Great Old One. Felled by lightning in 1937, this exceptionally tall Rocky Mountain Douglas fir, Sudatsuga Menziesi subspecies Glocka, was over 200 years old. According to local legends, it stretched beyond the stars. After it fell, it was measured to be 66 meters tall, nearly a record length. are a pain in the ass. we go. I'm almost out of ammo. <clears throat> another manuscript page. Wake sees the torch symbol. I turn the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, hidden by a rock, sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason. Packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo. Things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew, and more. The thermos back here. Hooray.
Bear alert. Use the shotgun here. Take him down a bit faster. Is that five? With like one of those heavies we just started fighting too? It's not good. Again. Maybe I should go after the little ones first. charge move. <sighs> Whatever. We'll get it. We'll get it. Or maybe this is where we have to cut it. It is getting late. It's quarter till ten. I don't know how much of it. But let me see just how much episode two is left.
Okay, we got one. Come on now. Fuck you, clowns. I'm actually out of pistol bullets now. That's okay. We at least got through the fight. Well, oh, no, Al. No, Al. Don't run off the cliff. There we go. side area. Dates from 1846, the year of the Oregon Treaty. The tree this ring was cut from started growing in 1846, the year the Oregon Treaty was signed. Other notable events marked on the rings. 1853, the Washington Territory was formed. 1878, the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company and the town itself. 1889, Washington was granted statehood. 1929, tree damaged in a forest fire. 1970, the Bright Falls Mining Company closes its doors after a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake. 1980, Mount St. Helens erupts. <sighs> Excuse me. 1987, tree felled by storm. All right. A manuscript page. Nightingale's arrival. Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These little communities revolted him, and he didn't like the trees or the coffee. He now knew that impossible horrors lurked behind the storefronts and smiles. He desperately wanted to turn the car around and just drive until he passed out or ran out of road and booze. But he had a job to do. He had a rider to catch, at any cost. All right. Let's see. There's a lot of episode two left, so I am going to call it here. This has been Let's Play Alan Wake, second episode. We'll continue with episode two next week. To those of you who joined me live on Twitch, thank you so much for being here. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, I hope you will hit that follow button so that you can see every time we go live in the future. If you're watching later on on YouTube, if you enjoyed it, please hit like. If you didn't, please leave a comment telling me why so I can fix it. And I know it can be difficult to catch live streams. Schedules are weird. They don't match up right. But... Um, if you subscribe to the channel, all of my content eventually makes its way over there, so that subscription will mean you won't miss anything. Finally, regardless of the platform you're on, I hope you'll join our Discord. The link to do so is in the Twitch channel description and or the YouTube video description. Discord's where I make official channel announcements. It's where we discuss the games you'd like to see me play, and it's where there's a fun, growing community of people who love video games just like you and me. Um, next stream is not going to be on Thursday. Tiffany and I are going to the Avs game. That's right, hockey preseason starts tomorrow. Um, so I will do a second stream either Wednesday or Friday. Watch the Discord. I'll let you know which day I pick after consulting with her and checking schedules and all that jazz. So 
Wednesday or Friday, we'll get back to Baldur's Gate. Hope to see you all whenever it is. Take care and have a good week.